Whether you're watching conference talks in person or videos on YouTube, learning how to think critically about the information in those talks is a fundamental skill in tech or really any other field. The speakers are asking you, as the viewer, to follow their opinion. So you have to judge a talk on two things. One, is the opinion clear and understandable? And two, is their reasoning any good? Recently, industry veteran Ryan Florence of the Remix team gave a pretty spicy talk over at Epic Web Dev to try and convince us never to use const in our JavaScript or something like that. So let's build up our critical analysis skills by dissecting this talk to see, does Ryan do a good job of telling us what he wants us to do and giving us really solid reasons for why we should do it? Now, at the start of the talk, we get some stuff about Alfred Nobel and LSD. It doesn't really get going until about three minutes in when Ryan introduces us to Dave Herman. Dave is the father of EX6, and he gave us let and const. Ryan's going to use Dave's tweets throughout the talk. But the problem is, for Ryan, that Dave never really says directly in his tweets, don't use const. Dave doesn't talk about const in his own talks. And he says in one tweet that he has regrets about const. And in another tweet, he says that const is being mistaken for functional programming, but there's no smoking gun. About the closest we get is about five minutes into the talk when Ryan gives us his bombshell tweet from Mark that const makes code less readable and not more. Makes your code less readable, not more. You can clap, John. <laughs> and if we stop there, what would the opinion be? Just kind of don't use const in general? And what's the reasoning? Because the author regrets it and says that the code is less readable because of it? Which, let's be honest, in terms of opinion and reasoning, is not a lot to go on six minutes in this presentation. We don't have a clear conception of what Ryan wants us to do or not do, and the reasons presented so far are just not that compelling. Now, the six-minute mark, we do get an actual concrete opinion. This time it's from Yehuda Katz, who says that the only time you should use const is for module globals and screaming case constants. Okay, that's a real opinion. We can work with that. But let's make that practical. What does that actually mean? Well, it means that declaring like a DB client at the top of a module as a const, that's okay. And screaming case, which is all of our case for something like ratings, that's okay. But const in a for loop, not okay. That you should not do. But again, not a lot of reasoning given, just I say this, so go do this. But hey, at least we have some concrete do this, don't do that type of opinion. Is it Ryan's opinion? We don't know. He doesn't really say. Next up, we get a new type of evidence. This time we get off the tweet train and now we're into anecdotal evidence. Now, I've got to give a little context here. Airbnb came out with a set of lint rules very early on that a lot of folks use even today. And those rules say that if you have a variable and it doesn't change, then that should be a const. And obviously, Ryan is not a super fan of this. Let's hear his reasoning. I was at Airbnb giving them a workshop with our company, React Training. And uh, this came up, the, ES, the Airbnb ES Lint config. And they all like started laughing, like, oh, we don't use that here. <laughs> so the people enforcing this thing don't even use it either. So this is the classic cool kids type argument. The cool kids aren't doing this thing, so you shouldn't do this either, which is a pretty shaky reasoning. Why aren't they using it? Who knows? He doesn't say. Just trust us. The cool kids aren't doing it, so you shouldn't do it either. But let's zip on to the next reason, which is that it's just hard to talk about this stuff since constants aren't variables, which I guess is true. So if you ask the question, how should we do variable assignment, that is an invalid question because cons are constant. They're not variables. They don't change. So you can't say to your coworker, like, oh, what's the value in this variable? You need to say, what's the var value in this constant? You're going to find this very difficult because you're calling all of your cons variables. And they're not variable. Okay, so we shouldn't use const because the conversations will be tough. Got it. Next, we get one more tweet from Dave talking about how mutation is difficult. And I, I personally definitely get that. Half of my videos are on state management. But what he's not telling us is the reason why they aren't helpful. I mean, it is a tweet. It's very short. So I wouldn't expect that. But we don't get that here either. 
And why would a let be better than a const in this situation? Who's to say? Who knows? But let's add it to the list of reasons anyway. Now around the eight minute mark, we finally get to some code. And the first example he shows us shows you that you can mutate the data that is in a const. And apparently that's lol that we can do this. Okay, but let's apply Ryan or Yehuda's opinion to this. Let's try screaming case. Whoops, turns out you get exactly the same problem. Turns out screaming case const are just as not constant as regular const. Adding the screaming case literally is no semantic value. The only other option in this opinion is to use let. So now we have a ratings array that could mutate into a string or a number or a date. Super exciting. And this right here is actually Ryan's most compelling reasoning in this talk. Constant JavaScript aren't really truly enforced constants all the way down. And apparently that means that we should just stop using them altogether. Or maybe in some cases, it's not really clear. Ryan then pushes that argument even further to its logical conclusion. This is what your code's gonna look like. This is the logical conclusion of what you're doing. And whenever I hear the terms to his logical conclusions, I, I know it's not gonna end well. So he shows this straw man example of what sane folks would just never in their right minds do and says, look, this is really bad, right? Except that nobody would ever do that. And honestly, in my book, Pushing an argument to its logical conclusion is just a cheap way to make an inherently weak argument seem a lot stronger than it really is. Now he's got one last code slide before things start to get, honestly, pretty weird in the talk. In this last one, he makes the point that function arguments are mutable. And that again, consts are bad because they only work up until they don't. Again, more arguments pushing to the extreme because const isn't perfect, you shouldn't use it at all. Now, his last two points are honestly pretty weird, but for different reasons. First, he brings up ChatGPT and some conversation he's seemingly had with it where he asked it if he should use const. And I got to say, the ChatGPT response doesn't read like any ChatGPT response I've ever seen. It's really short and it's super spicy. So I was like, that doesn't seem right. So I actually tried it myself. I brought up 3.5 and 4. And you know what? I give it exactly the same prompt and it gave me an entirely different answer in both cases. And turns out ChatGPT actually likes const a lot. Here's ChatGPT and LLM's conclusion about const in JavaScript. In practice, using const where possible is a good coding standard in JavaScript because it provides a level of assurance about the stability of variable values throughout the code. I agree. Which can contribute to fewer bugs and more stable, predictable code in production. That doesn't sound at all like Ryan's GPT response. Const is for people who need easy to follow rules, and it's a distraction from building a great user experience. So I think I'm going to add an asterisk <laughs> to that particular reason. Now, his final reason is really super odd and made me think that maybe this talk wasn't serious at all, but I, I still think it was. The sound of let is easy to make, and the sound of const is hard to make which means that using const it's ridiculous. is apparently ridiculous. And that's it. That's the end of the presentation. So we've now critically evaluated it. We've tried to narrow down what the opinion was and his reasoning behind it. Now, personally, I don't find that reasoning all that compelling. I'm personally going to stick with const for the time being. I could be convinced. But a talk like this is not going to do it. I want more than just being told that some folks don't like it or the cool kids don't do it. That's not a decent reason. Or that it just verbally sounds wrong. And none of that is compelling to me in the slightest. But I want to hear from you. Did you watch the talk? There's a link to it in the description right down below. Did it convince you? And more importantly, did this video encourage you to think more critically about information that you get from anyone, Ryan or me or anyone else in the tech biz, because you should be genuinely critical of it. Once someone convinces you to have their opinion, then their opinion becomes your opinion. And when somebody at the job or online asks you to justify that opinion, then you personally are going to have to have well thought out reasoning behind it. And in this case, if you adopt this opinion in this video, are these reasons the ones that you want to use to defend your position?
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's not the kind of thing that I usually do, but folks ask me for career advice every now and again. And one of the best things that you can do for yourself in your career is to build these critical analysis skills, to be able to suss out whether something kind of smells right or not and form your own opinion. But don't worry, I'll be back for more front end and full stack content in the weeks to come. In the meantime, of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.